Hi here, Finn's here. I am back for another one of my videos. Not one of my independent reviews. <laughs> but I am back for another Eurovision video. And today, I have watched all the rehearsal clips of all the countries that are competing at this year's Eurovision 2024. And today, I am now going to predict who will qualify from semi-final one of Eurovision 2024. So yes, to clarify, I have watched all the rehearsal clips this last week or so of all 37 entries this year. Um, I've seen the big old Malmo stage, the unique stage of cross. Um, yeah, I mean, Swedes know how to stage Eurovision, clearly. Um, I do like these like LED cubes that come down the ceiling. I think that's really nice. Um, and yes, um, I mean, I'm a little bit concerned with the wide angle camera shots and some of the entries seeing ooh, some of the entries look a bit empty on that cross, but hopefully when the crowd come in, they will reduce the emptiness of these stages. So I have seen them all and I will probably go through what I think of the staging as we, we go through this list of countries in semi-final one and the countries in semi-final two in another video. And of course, uh, we can't forget also that um, the uh, automatic qualifiers will be performing in the semi-finals, um, but they will not be competing, obviously, because they will necessarily qualify, but we do get to see a whole three-minute performance of each of them. So before I predict who I think will qualify from semi-final one, let's go quickly through the automatic qualifiers first, because um, we'll make it even playing field. <laughs> um, starting off with my country, United Kingdom, I mean, I am very impressed by this staging. It's very clever, you know, how they, they've got, like, how it tilts and at one point upside down. It's very clever how they do it. I have to give them that. Oli Alexander's done, you know, very creative with the staging and um, the stage director has been very creative. So, um, um, so I like it. It's very Sergei Lazarus, you know, when he goes into that orb and then the screen just goes in back in 2016. You know what I know? Um, my only concern with it is how it will come across to, towards some people. The whole sexiness in this, with the tongues out, uh, in that second rehearsal clip, I was a bit, oh, the humping each other's, I was a bit, ooh, is this a bit dangerous, UK? But you know what, it doesn't feel like staging you would see from the BBC, isn't it? It's very bold. I mean, it's not the gayest thing ever at Eurovision, but um, I, I'm I'm just concerned how that will come across. You know, I, I hope it doesn't come across a Ranella situation where it becomes too sexy. You know, Ranella was banging another woman. You know, and they were all going ha ah, ah. ha. I hope you know they don't push it too far. Um, but you know what? They're taking a risk with the staging and. You know, you got to give props, you know, it's not easy, you know, moving around all that time. And I hope what we'll see on Tuesday night, you know, will be a great production from the UK. And, you know, some people, you know, might not be happy that, oh, why is the BBC representing us like this song like this? You know, you know, you will get the occasional, occasional people, you know, on certain news channels that might not be so happy. But at the end of the day, at least they're taking a risk. Oli Alexander knows Eurovision. He's taking a risk. So good on him. I hope it pays off for him. Uh, Germany has elevated. They've kind of gone back to the music video element. Him sitting on a chair and there's fire everywhere. Um, Germany looks good. I like Isaac's blonde hair look now. Uh, really nice. Um, yeah, I think they've done the best they could do. And Sweden... Not much change, but we have got the cubes with all those numbers and letters. Uh, it looks nice. It will still be a great show opener in the grand final. But of course, knowing Sweden, it has really not really changed that dramatically since Melody Best of Holland. So now that being said, let's talk about the countries that will be competing in semi-final one. There are 15 countries, but of course only 10 can make it to the finals on Saturday. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bad cough. <coughs> Sorry. Now, there are four countries where I feel comfortably saying 
they're going to go through, and they are Lithuania, Ukraine, Croatia, and I think Finland as well. And I'll explain why. Lithuania has elevated. It's similar from the national final performance, but it just feels a bit more bigger, you know. And, you know, especially with those cubes, yeah. And, yeah, I think, like, Lithuanian diaspora support around Europe. Lithuania ain't in no danger of not making it um, to the grand final. Lithuania, you're through. Ukraine looks good. I like the mountain that Jerry walks on. Um, but I hope they do show a bit more Alona Alona. Um, I think she does appear at the side of the stage. But I do hope the two women, you know, harmonise near the end of the song. Um, I do I, I do find it a bit funny they didn't show Alona Alona at the second rehearsal recap clip. Um, but that being said, Ukraine will go through. Always, always. It's, it's good enough to go through. Ukraine's going through. Croatia will go through. No doubt about it. Um, I like it. It's very colourful now. Even more colourful than it was. If it wasn't broke, don't fix it. It's pretty much the same from the national final, but it feels a bit more bigger in some sense. Baby lasagna going through. Ring a ting tam dim dim dim. <laughs> and I do think Finland will make the finals. I know it's a bit of a controversy, you know, I, they were a bit under fire with the whole nudity thing from Windows 95 Man, because he really did show his old bottom in the rehearsal clips. I really don't know how they managed to get that away from that with the EBU. Um, I don't know when it will come on to the Tuesday night on the semi-finals where um, the EBU will probably have to say, no, can you just put a bit more of a tighter, you know, panty line on or something like that. It's a bit too revealing. Um, I don't know if it was just for our rehearsals. That's the look they wanted to joke around with. Um, but that all being said, and a little controversy and that, and I think it will stand in, out enough um, in the semi-final where I think it will go just straight through. I don't think it's going to win the semi-final, but I think it will just stand out, especially in the second half. Finland will go through. And then there's three countries where I'm just feeling like I'm ruling them out. And so I think these three countries probably will most likely not make the finals. And they are Iceland, Moldova and Azerbaijan. I'll go through them quickly. Iceland, I have to say, I did like their staging. I do think they have improved with staging. Going for gold, Hera sounds great. Like that she's brought her backing singers on the stage. You know, she once was a backing singer, so bring her own backing singers, that's nice. So actually, uh, the, the Icelandic team knows how to stage it. I still think the song is beneath her, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I still think it won't get enough support for it to go through. But I think at least they've done a good job. Moldova, on the other hand, I think... I like the LED graphics, but I did... I, I don't know, I miss the uh, multiple women on the stage because that gave it some room, that gave it some space. Now it just, it's just Natalia on her own and when you zoom out, it just looks a bit empty. Um, so I don't know if it's a budget thing for Moldova this year. It's a shame because in the middle, actually, I really like, I like Natalia Boyombu and I liked Fight in 2007. I really feel upset about this and... But the lack of buzz as well with Moldova this year, I think they're not going to make it, sadly. And Azerbaijan's the other one where I go, it might sneak in, but overall, like Moldova, there's not a much hype around Azerbaijan this year. The staging looks very slick. It does feel a bit cold in places, but... Um, I still think, like, it's their chemistry between the two singers... Again, they do feel a bit uh, like it's similar to Ukraine where they're se two singers separated. But with Ukraine, I do think they will come together at one point in the song. But with Azerbaijan, they're just two people that don't look like they've been just been put together. And I just think like uh, there's just something a bit cold. And it just doesn't really feel impactful enough to speak to those for Azerbaijan. So... Yeah, it's not a bad entry by any means. It's way better than last year. But will people vote for it, though? That's the thing. So I'm ruling out Azerbaijan. 
So there are a few countries where I've been, um, I feel like I will see them in the finals. I build confidence now. I think one of those countries is Ireland. I feel really confident in saying Ireland will make the finals this year. I think Bambi Fug, you know, has improved. I think the staging has looked better. I um, mean, that opening shot looks epic. And yes, I think I'm feeling very promising about Ireland. I think it stands out in the semi. Um, you know, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. But I think I've got to give bravo to Bambi and Fug. I mean, what the Bambi Fug has done, it has improved and I've got abroad the Irish delegation as well I think I feel confident saying that I think Ireland will go through I think Ireland will go through another one I think Portugal will go through I know Portugal don't have many friends in the semi-final but on song alone I think it's good enough on its own merits I think Alanda sings the song very well and it's near the end of the show I think Portugal will get a place in the finals I think Luxembourg will get a place in the finals. It's closing the show. And I think it's a good show closer now, thinking about it. The one thing I would say, I wish Tally wasn't all in black. I wish they gave her a bit more colour. But it pops out at the end of the show. I think it's a good way to end the show. And yes, um, there isn't that many girl box in this semi-final. So I think Luxembourg will go through. So yes, so that's seven countries I've put down as qualifiers. Um, so that leaves Cyprus, Serbia, Poland, Slovenia, oh my gosh, Australia, and Australia. So, okay, I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. I've been so back and so forth in this. I want both Slovenia and Australia to go through so badly this year. There are two of my favourite songs and I will be gutted if both of them, or at least one of them, don't make it on Tuesday night. I just think both of those songs are just way too good to lose on Tuesday night. I feel, I, 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 want, I feel confident Australia will make it. I feel Australia will make it. Near the end of the show, my only concern is like some of the wide angle camera shots, you know, could come across empty, but I hopefully the crowd will get behind this. And I think it will stand out like there's nothing else in the semi final. And this is joy, this is fun, this is Wamika Halila. I think Australia will go through. I am I'm getting my fingers crossed. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Slovenia. I think Slovenia will go through. Second half. You know, I think it will. I do like the dancing. And I do like it's not completely too dark. I think Slovenia doesn't have a big budget. So it's clear to see. But think of what they have done. I think they've done something good. I think Raven sings it well. And I think there will be an audience for these kind of Balkan ballads at home. Um, across Europe. So I feel like there is a place for Slovenia to get in. Um... Yeah, I really hope so. I'm begging people to vote Slovenia. I really hope so. So, um, let's talk about Poland. I mean, that stage show, um, it's had mixed feelings across people, the Polish staging. I've got to say, I'm not a big fan of Poland staging. I think they have done too much again. <laughs> it's clear to see. I think the issue I have is I feel like they've given Luna too much to do herself. And because she's doing too much herself, it's it's affecting her vocals. And because she has to move around a lot, she has to move to one side to there, one side, and then she has to go on the floor one bit, and then she has to get up, and then she has to be able to literally go up a tower. Like, they've taken that quite literally this year. Um... They've given her too much to do. I think they've given they should cut it down. I mean, they if she can't really sing that well lying on the floor, then don't have her lying on the floor. Like show off that red horse, that's great, but don't make her <laughs> go on the floor and make her sing because that ain't easy for an artist to do. Um, 
I think they have broken too much of the staging. And I know Poland has a diaspora, but I just don't think this song is strong enough in this semi. And I just think in the middle of Ukraine and Croatia, I just don't think it's good enough. I'm sorry, Poland. I think Poland will get a bit of a chunk, a few chunk of points from their diaspora, but I think it might just come 11th in the semi final, is my gut feeling, beginning the first half as well. I just think it's just not strong enough, and I do think they have thrown too much at this kitchen sink this year, and I think it's a year too far for Poland, personally. So that leaves, interesting enough, the first two songs, Cyprus and Serbia. And I've gone backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, what I think the last qualifier is. And you got to hear me out. I think it will be Cyprus. Cyprus is opening. It's a girl bop. People like girl bops. You know, I know Cyprus, what they're giving us this year, is nothing new. It's nothing different from all the other girly bops. It's Celia and White doing her thing. But people will like to that. People will latch on to that, you know. It's not throwing too much at her. And yeah, I think it's going to be a fun opener to the show. And the Cypriot Greek diaspora for around Europe and Australia will give probably 12 points to Celia. I think Cyprus will go through. And now, the reason why... It's, I know, you're all going to hate me for this, but I haven't put... I think Serbia will be the shop non-qualifier. I don't want it to be the shop non-qualifier. I think there's worse songs that will go through <coughs> Finland. But hear me out. My concern with Serbia is it's a beautiful song, beautiful Balkan ballad. I'm worried that it's just going to come on too early for people and people are just going to forget about it considering quite the slow tempo songs we have quite later on in the semi-final. I'm worried Serbia because they've been sandwiched between two other really good strong entries from Cyprus and Lithuania this year that people will just in a televote only televote only semi final system, I'm worried people will forget Serbia, and that is my concern. It will be like Molly Sterling back in 2015 for Ireland. You know that was a beautiful ballad, very slow, sad song as well. But it performed in number two spot, qualified for the juries, came second to last in the televotes, and then it qualified 12th place. So. That's my concern with Serbia. Um, it shouldn't be a non-qualifier, but if there's ever going to be a shock, I think it will be Serbia. And they are quite low down in the bookies now, um, near the borderline section, which is quite dangerous. So that's that's my personal thing. I hope to be wrong on Tuesday night. Um, it could be Cyprus being the shock, but my gut feeling, I've got to go with my gut, that Serbia will be the shock non-qualifier, and I've got to... <laughs> mentally prepare that now <laughs> just in case so the 10 countries that I think will go through are the Cyprus, Lithuania Ireland, Ukraine Croatia, Slovenia Finland, Australia Portugal and Luxembourg that means the 5 countries that I feel like we could be saying goodbye after Tuesday night will be Serbia, Poland Iceland, Moldova and Azerbaijan but what do you think? Comment down below in the comments section below, like and subscribe to this video and I'll be back for more content very soon. So then, goodbye people, goodbye!